The Propeller microcontroller is programmable in C, C++, and assembly language from a standard Windows, Mac, or Linux desktop or laptop. However, the same environment can be had using a low-cost Raspberry Pi single board computer. There are various configurations possible, but we will focus on a complete standalone configuration consisting mostly of these standard computer parts. Let's get started. First, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. You can find this board by itself from various online sources for around $35. We recommend you get the Model B as it has more RAM, a network connector, and an extra USB connector. Next is the most important component to add, the power supply. This must be a micro USB wall charger, the kind commonly used as a mobile phone or tablet charger. There are many to choose from online and at local stores, but don't skimp on quality for the price. They all should output 5 volts DC, but many don't provide enough electrical current to support stable operation of the Raspberry Pi. It's vital that you use one rated for at least 6 watts, that's 1.2 amps, but we recommend a 12 watt 2.4 amp supply or greater similar to the one shown here. Plug the micro USB side of the power supply cable into the power connector on the board. Note that the board has no power switch, so leave the power supply unplugged from the wall until you have every component connected and ready to go. The next critical part is the storage system. For the Raspberry Pi, this must be an SDHC card. We recommend a 4GB Class 10 or better SDHC card for space and speed. There are many to choose from, but get a good quality card as it will greatly affect performance and reliability. Check this site for a list of known compatible and incompatible cards before you purchase one. We'll show you how to load the operating system onto this card a little later. For a video display, use an HD monitor and a standard HDMI mail-to-mail -mail cable. To avoid power-related problems, we recommend using a USB 2.0 high-speed hub with an included external power supply. The hub's external power supply will prevent extra burden being placed on the Raspberry Pi. Connect a USB mouse and USB keyboard to the ports on the USB hub. Connect a standard CAT5 network cable between the Raspberry Pi and a port on your network. A DHCP-based network is recommended, like what is provided by most modern combo router and wireless access points. Now that you have things connected, you need to install an operating system onto the SDHC card using an available desktop or laptop with an SD card writer. After inserting your SD card, go to the Raspberry Pi download site. Download, install, and run the SD Card Association's formatting tool from the link provided. Use this software to format the SD card properly for use with the Raspberry Pi. Then go back to the Raspberry Pi download site and get the OS image. There are many Linux distributions for Raspberry Pi. For the best experience, use the new out-of-box software, or Noobs, to install the operating system image. Download the Noob's image and extract its contents onto the SD card. When done, eject the SD card from the computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Plug in the USB hub's power supply, then the micro USB supply to power up the Raspberry Pi. After a few moments, Noobs will boot and present you with a simple OS installation menu. We recommend selecting the Raspbian operating system and then click Install OS. Noobs will then install Raspbian onto your SD card and will then reboot. At the end of the first reboot, the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool will appear. All defaults are fine, except that we recommend setting the GUI desktop to automatically start up after boot. Upon rebooting a final time, the Raspbian graphical desktop will appear. We're almost done. Now you need to download and install the simple IDE development software onto your Raspberry Pi. In the Raspbian desktop, open the Midori web browser and go to the Propeller Raspberry Pi page. Download the simple IDE Raspberry Pi package. Open the LX terminal. It should start up in your home directory right where Midori saved the download. Type ls to verify. Use BunZip2 to unzip the archive. Be patient, as this process takes five minutes or more. When it's done, extract the installation files from the resulting tar file. This will take about two minutes.
Then change to the resulting simple IDE folder and run the setup script. This will also take about two minutes. When installation is complete, run simple IDE by typing dot slash simple IDE. Accept all the default first time run settings. Finally, you can connect your propeller activity board to the Raspberry Pi. Select the proper port in Simple IDE's port field and compile and download your code to the propeller as needed.